This is uh, today's class. In today's topic, we will discuss about uh, efficient sorting algorithms and combined sorting algorithms. Okay, so this is especially for you, my dear students and young researchers, and you can reach me at dr.krishwanan at the rate of gmail.com. So, before beginning the session, once again, let me thank God for giving me this golden opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students, and young researchers. Right. So, in this class, we will discuss about efficient sorting algorithms, about the big O notation, straight insertion sort, the Python implementation, then we will discuss about shell sort, bubble sort, quick sort, heap sort and characteristics of the heap sort algorithm. Okay. So, I have already given the animal and work for you. I hope you would have completed. Okay. So, at regular intervals, I will be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics. So this is sorting algorithms. So using sorting algorithms, you can actually go for arranging, okay, ascending or maybe descending order. So sorting algorithms is how you try to organize the array of items from maybe smallest till largest. Okay. So the algorithms you can organize any messy data and you can make it much more easier to use. Okay. So if you try to understand how, what are the algorithms, how they work, okay. So that is how you try to understand the computer science, okay. So maybe we'll have two algorithms right now, like a straight insertion sort and then shell sort. So maybe like, uh, maybe the elements get inserted in the right place. So you try to order them, okay. Next, after this uh, straight insertion sort and shell sort, we'll go for bubble sort and quick sort, okay. So that uh, with exchanging when uh, elements when move around the array maybe like one three two five two you put here okay four you put here so you make it arranged okay so that you will have them the last one is heap sort okay heap sort it sorts through the selection where the right elements are selected as the algorithms run down the array okay so suppose let us take in the case we have two functions f of x and g of x okay so there are two functions defined on the sum subset of the real numbers. Okay, so f of x is equal to order of g of x. Okay, so here x would be tending to infinity. Okay, so if and only if there is some constant n and then c such that f of x is equal to c. Okay, c multiplied by modulus of g of x. So for this case, x is greater than n. Okay, so which means that f does not grow faster than g so for this case we can use big o notation okay so big o you can denote either the time complexity of the algorithm or maybe you can go for space complexity space complexity means it is about how much space it might take up okay so this is how you try to identify the worst case for the targeted algorithm and maybe you would form formulate the function for the performance okay so for example if there were an algorithm, okay, so that searched for the number 2 in the array. So, then the worst case would be if the 2 was present at the end of the array. For example, like uh, 1, 5, 7, 9, 10, 11, then 2. For example, if you have to search 2. Good. So, 2 is in the last element. So, you have to go for 1, 2, 3, till you find it 2 at the last. Okay. So, that is the worst case. So, the big O notation would be order of en since it would have been run through the entire n element array before finding the number 2. Okay. So, you have like time complexity and then space complexity. So, quick start, we have order of n log n. Average case, it is order of n log n. Worst case, it is order of n square, n power 2. Okay. And space complexity, order of log n. Similarly, merge start, order of n log n, order of n log n. Uh, we'll have worst case, n log n. Okay, space complexity order of n. Okay, so time sort will have, uh, you know, omega of n. Okay, average case order of n log n. Okay, so worst case order of n log n. So space complexity order of n. Keep sort omega of n log n. Average case theta of n log n. Okay, worst case order of n log n. Okay, space complexity order of 1. Bubble sort, it is actually omega of n. Okay, uh, average case theta of n square. Worst case, order of n square and space complexity 1. Okay, so uh, insertion sort also just the same. Okay, selection sort omega of n square. Okay, average case theta of n square. Worst case, order of n square and space complexity order of 1. 
pre-sort it is omega of n log n uh, average case theta of n log n okay worst case order of n square space complexity order of n shell sort it is omega of n log n just like pre-sort okay uh, shell sort it is theta of n log n the whole square okay and worst case order of n log n the whole square space complexity order of 1 bucket sort you will have omega of n plus k average case theta of n plus k order of n square for the worst case and space complexity order of n then radix sort omega of n k and then average case theta of n k worst case also same order of n k but space complexity order of n plus k okay counting sort you have omega of n plus k average case theta of n plus k worst case order of n plus k and then space complexity order of k then you have cube sort okay omega of n average case theta of n log n okay worst case order of n log n and then space complexity order of n so if you can see all this one quick sort merge sort time sort heap sort bubble sort insertion sort selection sort tree sort shell sort bucket sort uh, radix sort counting sort and cube sort everything is going to sort everything has its own procedure so you should know what is the best case what is the worst case what is the average case okay for the time complexity and for the space complexity what is the thing okay so they will ask even in the interview even they will try to ask this one you should know about this one and you should be able to tell that okay right. so we'll go for straight insertion sort so a, this is the basic sorting algorithm so the, that is going to insert a element into the right position of the already sorted list already sorted list you are going to make into okay so maybe it will be usually added at the end of the new array and moves down until it finds the element smaller okay so that's the actually the desired position okay so the process is going to repeat for all the elements in the unsorted array for example you will have the array 3 1 2 5 4 so maybe we begin at 3 okay and since there are no elements in the sorted array the sorted array just becomes 3 okay so that's the way okay so already sorted means it will go on okay so afterwards we try to insert one which is actually smaller than three okay so it would move in front of three okay so already we had three now one is placed in front so one comma three okay so the same process is repeated until we get the array one two three four five okay for example one it will move here two it will move here okay four then 5 so that only 1 2 3 4 five. so the advantage is that it's a much more straightforward process and much more easy to implement okay so the advantage you know this process is much more straightforward and of course easy to implement even but uh, you know with regards to the process okay it is much more faster because there are much more smaller elements to sort for example we had like five elements like 1 2 3 4 5 so we had like very small elements to sort even okay so you can also turn into binary insertion which is uh, where you try to compare over longer distance and of course narrow down to the right spot instead of actually comparing against single element before the right place so you can place it in the order one like uh, for example one before three two before three uh, five before four so that is how you make a straightforward process okay so then we'll have the python implementation okay so a uh, straight insertion sort is much more slower when the list becomes large okay because when, when, for example five elements okay no problem un element igrama element elik element use element uh, birming element let us take in the case then which means that the process will become slow okay so the main characteristics is the insertion sort family it's a straightforward and simple worst case it is order of n square okay so we will have like uh, uh, the implementation okay so usr bin okay in the environment python 3 okay so that is how you will have the insertion sort okay so define insertion sort a list okay so you have for index in the range okay one comma length of a list okay so current value is equal to a list of index position you set the position to be index while position is greater than zero and the a list of position minus one so you set the current value so for the current value you'll have a list of position is equal to a list of position minus one okay so position is equal to position minus one then you set the a list position is equal to current value okay so 
that's how you try to implement this one okay so then you'll have shell sort okay so shell sort it's a insertion sort okay so that is going to first partially sort its data and then it is going to finish the sort by running a insertion sort algorithm so insertion sort also comes inside shell sort okay so it generally starts by choosing smaller subsets of the array okay and sorting those array so for every small element you take that is going to sort into afterwards it is going to repeat the same pro procedure with larger subsets until it finds a point where the subset is the array and the entire thing becomes sorted okay for example i choose this group of people sort this group of people sort this group of people sort until i find all of them sort okay so this is a shell sort okay so the advantage of doing this one is having the array almost entirely sorted so which helps the final insertion sort achieve or be close to the most efficient scenario okay so increasing size of the subsets is achieved through the decreasing increment term okay so for example we'll have uh, you know different elements okay so 37 41 67 32 so it will be moving correspondingly to the smaller set of elements to sort them okay so increasing size of the subsets is actually achieved through the decreasing increment term okay increment term also essentially chooses every kth element to put it into that particular subset so it's going to start large leading to smaller groups even and it becomes smaller until it becomes one okay so the main advantage of the shell sort is that it's more efficient than the regular insertion sort so the characteristics of shell sort so there is a variety of different algorithms that you are going to optimize the shell sort by changing the way the increment decreases since the only restriction is that the last term in the sequence of increment is one okay so the most popular method of this shell sort is nooth method okay so that is we will have a formula okay so h is equal to 3 power k minus 1 divided by 2 so that gives the sequence of the intervals like 1 4 13 okay so that it will be calculating okay 3 power k minus 1 by 2 so we are going to substitute okay so k value okay so correspondingly we will be having with the case of the intervals k equal to 1 it's actually 1 k equal to 2 it will be 4 k equal to 3 it will be 13 so that is how you will have the formula okay so that you can use it in the shell sort so shell sort if you can compare it's not an efficient method okay like a quick sort or maybe merge sort the main characteristics is same like sorting by insertion and you can optimize the algorithm by changing the increments okay so using nooth's method you can actually calculate the worst case okay that is actually order of n power 3 by 2 okay so this is the python implementation of the shell sort method okay so that's you try to define shell sort a list that's a list okay so sub list count length of a list by 2 okay so while sub list count is greater than 0 so for the start position in the range of sub list count okay so you will have to have the gap insertion sort so a list start position sub list count okay so sub list count you are going to have sub list count okay slash 2 okay so you define the gap insertion sort n list start and then gap so for we will have the for loop for i in the range start plus gap length of n list comma gap so the current value you will going to have the n list of i position equal to i while position is greater than equal to gap and n list of position gap is greater than current value so you will have the n list of position is equal to n list of position minus gap then you set the position equal to position minus gap and the n list of position you set the current value okay so this is how you will try to implement the shells so next you will have bubble sort okay bubble sort you are going to compare you know the adjacent elements in the array and you are going to organize you are going to order the elements so the name comes from the larger numbers tend to float or maybe it's bubble to the top okay so that is going to loop through the array and see if the number at one position is greater than the number at that following position so which means that something is smaller something is larger means so accordingly it will arrange okay so that's a way okay so the cycle repeats until the algorithm has gone through the array without having to change the order okay so
so you can uh, find that it is advantages it's much more simple okay and works well for mostly sorted list already sorted it is working well okay so programmers also can quickly and easily implement the sorting algorithm but only one thing it's a slower process slower sorting algorithm so these are the main characteristics okay so you try to exchange sorting and of course it's easy to implement the worst case event so order of hints so in the different types of list okay so you try to find one thing and you try to order okay so this is the python implementation okay so define bubble sort of a list for pass name in the range of length of a list minus one zero minus one so for i in the range pass num so if the a list of i is greater than a list of i plus one so you define okay the temporary equal to a list of i a list of i you try to increment a list of i plus one and a list of i plus one is temp so that is how you try to order or arrange then you have quick sort okay so it's a most efficient sorting algorithm and of course it is working well okay it's very good so the first thing you have to select a pivot number so this number will actually separate the data on its left okay so that's the numbers smaller than it and greater numbers you will have right for example we divide into two 10 elements are there ah, okay so those smaller left side those greater right side so right side you try to sort left side you try to sort and join so that's how you will have okay so we get the whole sequence partition after the data is partitioned we can uh, assure that the partitions are oriented we know that we have bigger values on the right and smaller values on the left so that it will be using divide and conquer algorithm with recursion procedure okay so we have the data divided as we use recursion to call the same method and pass the left half of the data and after the right half in order to separate and ordinate the data so the characteristics of quick sort okay so at the end of the execution we will have the data all sorted okay so from the family of the exchange sort algorithm we'll have divide and conquer paradigm worst case complexity order of n square so for example like one two three four okay so here if you see seven six five eight so that it will move right side right side greater so pi it will put here six it will put here seven it will put here eight it will put here so that is how it will move in the right hand side. so this is the python implementation define quick sort of a list okay so quick sort helper a list okay zero len of a list minus one so define quick sort helper a list first last so if the first is less than last split point is equal to partition a list first and then last so quick sort helper a list first split point minus one quick sort helper you will have a list split point plus one and then last so that is how you change this one so define partition okay so a list first and last pivot value you will have a list of first so left mark okay you will set the left okay so first plus one right mark it is actually last okay so done equal to false while not done so while left mark is less than or equal to right mark and a list of left mark is less than or equal to pivotal value so you will try to increment okay so left mark is equal to left mark plus one then you'll go for the next one okay while loop while a list of right mark is greater than or equal to pivotal value and maybe right mark is greater than or equal to left mark so you try to in, uh, decrement okay so right mark it equal to right mark minus one so if the right mark is lesser than the left mark which means that the condition is okay done is equal to true else case you set the temporary a list of left mark then a list of temp uh, left mark is equal to a list of right mark then a list of right mark equal to temp so that you will assign 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 and that makes it to the end okay so temporary is equal to a list of first a list of first is equal to a list of right mark so a list of right mark will return and return the right mark so basically if you see means for example here if you can see one two three four so this is actually set finished uh, eight seven six five five you put here okay then you have seven means you are storing in, in the memory seven you are storing in the memory okay then six is there then you put like this then eight you put it in the last so the remaining things you so you save it in the memory and you can order it until that list is actually fully ordered okay, or maybe aligned then you have heap sort okay so that's a sorting algorithm based in the structure of the heap 
So heap is a specialized data structure found in the tree or maybe a vector. So here in the first stage of the algorithm, a tree is created with the values to be sorted. Okay, so starting from left, we create the root node with the first value. Then we create left child node and maybe insert the next value. So we try to evaluate, okay, until this child node is bigger than the value at the root node. Maybe if yes means we can actually change the values. So we do this all the tree. So the initial idea is that the parent nodes always have bigger values than the child node. So at the end of the first step, we create a vector starting with the root value and maybe from left to right, we try to fill the vector. Okay. Then we try to compare parent and then child node values looking for the biggest value between them. If we find it means we change the places, reordering the values. Okay. So we try to compare, you know, the root node with the last leaf in that particular tree. If the root node is actually bigger, then we change the values. We continue to repeat the process until the last leaf what you are finding is the larger value. Okay. So when there are no more values to rearrange, we add the last leaf to the vector and restart the process. Okay. So for example, here we'll have eight. Less than six. Okay. Seven. Okay. Similarly, six, four and five you have. Four means left. Five is greater, so right. Similarly, seven. Okay, so three, two. Okay, then you categorize. So that is how it will move. Eight, six, five. It will go into. Okay. So this is actually like a, a, a parent child relationship. So it will go on. Down, down, down. Okay, right. So here it will start from initial small. Then it will go two, three, four, five. Then six, seven. Then eight. Okay. So the from, from the family of sorting by selection you can follow this one and the comparison in the worst case you can have like order of n log n okay but heap sort it's not a stable algorithm okay so because we are finding sorting that is okay but uh, uh, with regards to inputs many inputs okay it's not producing that much efficient work so this is the python implementation so we'll have the python program for the implementation of heap sort so this is to heapify the subtree rooted at the index i. So n is nothing but the size of the heap. So define heapify array uh, array n i. So you set the largest equal to i. Okay, that is the initialize the largest as the root. So l is equal to 2 multiplied by i plus 1. So that is actually left is equal to 2i plus 1. And then right is equal to 2i plus 2. So see if the left child of the root exists. And maybe it is greater than the root. Okay. So maybe if length is less than n and array of i is lesser than the array of l, then you set the largest equal to l. Okay. So see if the right child of the root exists and is greater than the root. Okay. So if r is less than n and array of largest is lesser than array of r, so largest is equal to r. Okay. So you change the root if needed, if largest is not equal to i. So you will have the array of i and then array of largest equal to array of largest array of i. You try to swap the values. Okay. Then heapify the root. Okay. So heapify array n largest. Then you have the main function in order to sort the array. Okay. So define heap sort of array. n is equal to length of array. You build a maximum heap. So for i in the range n minus 1 minus 1. Heapify array n and then i. So one by one, you try to extract the elements. Okay. So for i in the range, n minus 1, 0, minus 1. Array of i, you'll have array of 0. Okay. You'll set it as array of 0 and array of i. Then finally, heapify the array i and 0. So finally, you'll finish this one as heap sort of array. Okay. So that is how you try to go for.